Hi, I'm Vin with Boris FX, and in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to recreate this opening to the Star Trek reboot right from within Title Studio. Now before I begin, there's a few things I'm going to need. The insignia that you see here is actually not a 3D model. It's an EPS file drawn in Illustrator. There are also some texture files which I'll be referring to. Now with the exception of the EPS file, all the textures are installed with BCC10. However, to make things easier, I've included everything in a project file which is attached to this tutorial. In addition to these, the last thing I'm going to need is, of course, the font, which is known as Federation Classic. It's available as a free font to download from Defont or Urban Fonts. Okay, let's begin. Here I am in After Effects, and I've created a 1920 by 1080 comp that's 5 seconds long. The first thing I want to do is create a new comp-sized solid. For now, let's make it white. Now you can make yours any color, but this is going to allow me to show you something in a little bit. Now this solid is where I'm going to apply my Title Studio effect, so I'm going to go and rename it Logo. Next, I'll go to my effects and presets from the 3D objects category, and I'll drag Title Studio right onto the solid. When Title Studio launches, I'm going to go ahead and get rid of the default text so I can start from scratch. I also want to make sure that I toggle off the Animate Static button. This way, I can make adjustments without automatically creating new keyframes. Once that's done, I'm going to go to my Add New Media button and import my Starfleet Insignia EPS file. Okay, that looks nice, but because it's an EPS file, I have this star section filled in, and I don't want that in my final result. To remove this, I want to change the track media to Spline Object. By doing so, Title Studio will treat each section of the image as a separate spline object. If I select the Material Track and my Arrow tool, I can then select the interior or exterior spline. By holding the Shift button down, I can then select them both. And when both are selected, I can go to the Tools menu, select Path, and then Combine Contours. This will essentially punch a star-shaped hole in my insignia, which is conveniently exactly what I want. When that's done, I'm going to convert my spline object to an extrusion. And while I'm at it, let's rename it Insignia. Okay, this is nice, but I want to add some texturing, so I'm going to select the front material layer and twirl it open to reveal the default material track. If I select this track, my control window will display the material attributes, and it's here that I can change the material type to a number of different options. I could add bump mapping, reflections, etc. For this project, though, I'm going to keep it simple, so I'm just going to select texture. Now, by default, Title Studio will take the texture from the video layer, which in this case is the white solid I applied Title Studio to. If I'd made the solid a darker color, for instance, then my extrusion would have disappeared against the background. It's not a big deal because it's still there, but it's just something that you want to be aware of when you're planning out your workflow. Anyway, I want to apply a texture to this. So I'm going to select the texture track and change the track media to an image file. In this case, I'm going to load LT Gallery 4, and this is available in the project file as well as installed as a grunge texture with BCC10. Now from here, I'm going to go to the Texture Modifier tab and change the X scale to 10 and the Y scale to 33.4. With that done, let's start getting this insignia looking a bit more official. I'm going to select the main track, and note when I do, my control window updates to reflect the shape level parameters. From here, I can select the extrusion tab. Now I'm going to set my extrusion to 4, the bevel type to convex, and the bevel amount to 0.1. I also want to enable back bevels. To position my insignia, I'm going to go to the position tab. Now remember to make sure that you've disabled the animate static toggle, or any changes made here will cause new keyframes to be generated. Once in my Position tab, I'm going to set the Position X to 974, Position Y to 576, and the Master Scale to 538. Making sure that my CTI is on the first frame, I want to set up a linear interpolation on the Spin Y parameter, and adjust it to negative 90 degrees. Then I'm going to select the very last keyframe and change the Spin Y to 0 degrees with a Hold interpolation. If I scrub my timeline, it should animate the insignia like this. Okay, with that done, let's create some text. For my Add Media button, I'm going to create an extruded text track. Now, if it appears behind the insignia, toggling the eye off will hide that insignia until I'm ready to work with it again. With my text track selected, I can go to the Text tab and change it to Star Trek or whatever you want. I'll set my font to Federation Classic, the size to 72, and the tracking to 12.57. Now, the text in the original example, while extruded, is pretty unremarkable. So in the Extrusions tab, I'm just going to set the Extrusion to 3.1, and everything else I'm going to drop to 0. When that's done, I'm going to change the texture, and I can do this the exact same way I did it for the Insignia. I'll select the Front Material track, select the Color Material, and change it to Texture. Again, it turns white to reflect the video layer, so I'm going to change that material to a new image, which will be Metallic Gold Comb. 
We won't need to change the texture scaling here, so let's just go back to the main track and select the Position tab. Once in the Position tab, I'm going to set the Tumble X to negative 7.2 degrees and the Position Z to negative 701.48. This is going to move it forward in Z space so it is no longer behind the insignia, so feel free to turn that on again if you want. Now there's a little bit of camera movement to the animation, so I'm going to select my scene container and move my CTI to about the one second mark. In the camera tab, I can add a linear interpolation to my zoom parameter. Once that's done, I can select the very last frame and set a decelerate interpolation on that same zoom, changing it to 5116.77. And there we go. This is looking pretty great, but there's one last thing I need to do, which is to set up the lighting. With my scene container selected, I'm going to go to the Lights tab. I want to set my ambient lighting to around 19. Then I want to select my default point light and make a few adjustments. I'm going to set the Light X to 322.56, the Light Y to 1255.28, the Distance to 542.89, and my Intensity to 112. What did this do? Well, if I switch to my world view, I can see that what it's doing is that it sets the light below and to the left of the text. Light is cast on the side of the insignia pointed away from the render camera. As the insignia rotates, that light will be cast on the underside of the lower curved point. Okay, next thing I want to enable is a second light. I'm going to make sure that it's selected and the checkbox is enabled, and then I'm going to set it to Spotlight. I'm going to set my light Y to 369.82, my distance to 1378.55, my spot X to 1686.39, spot Y to 441.8, spot Z to 1007.35, angle to 37.76, edge fall off to 90, and last but not least, I'll set my attenuation to 30. I can also select my color chip and set the RGB colors to a nice peach coloring. Now, now trust me, it'll work but I want to set that RGB to 255, 225, and 210. Now with my first frame selected, I'm going to set up a linear interpolation for both my light X and my intensity. My light X I'll set to 1557.16, and my intensity will go to 177.66. Next, I'll select the last frame and change my light X to 2300.84, and my intensity to 91.66. When I play that back, it's looking pretty darn good. All right, now before we apply this back to the host, I'm just going to save the project. This way I can access it in another host or import it into another project later if I want. Once that's done, let's apply everything back to the host. All righty, it looks pretty good, but as always, let's put a few finishing touches on this. I'm going to drop my black and white grunge texture into the comp just below my logo track. That doesn't look quite right, but stick with me because I'm going to go to my effects and presets and select BCC brightness and contrast. I'm going to drop that right onto my texture and I'm going to set my brightness to negative 43 and my contrast to 9. Next, I'm going to go back and apply BCC Vignette. I want to shift my center to 392 and 980.5 and then I'm going to drop my radius to about 8. Lastly, I want to apply Fast Lens Blur, but there's no need to make any adjustments here. The default values give me exactly what I'm looking for. Okay, that's starting to look better. We have some nice texture in the background, but it, it needs something more. So what I want to do is create a new adjustment layer at the top, and let's name it J.J. Abrams. Or Lens Flares, it's entirely up to you. Now if we look at the original video, there are actually two different lens flares here. We have this chroma hoop and this little guy off to the side. This is probably a fraction of how many lens flares actually appear in the movie, but for our purposes it looks pretty good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply BCC Lens Flare 3D to this adjustment layer. I want to set my built-in light source to about 996 and negative 740. This is going to place the main flare above and outside of the comp. I'm also going to disable everything except for chroma hoop and chromatic aberration. Now to make this look right, I need to time it with the spotlight movement that I've already created in Title Studio. To do this, I'm going to set a keyframe for the chroma hoop intensity at around 1 second with a value of 0. At around the 3 second mark, I'll create another keyframe with a value of 50. Now there's a nice trick to go and select both keyframes in the timeline, right click, and in the keyframe assistant, select Easy Ease. It's going to make that adjustment smoothly. Next I want to apply a second instance of Lens Flare 3D, and this is going to become the light source for the spotlight that I created in Title Studio. I'm going to select the preset Chroma Lens DD, and at around 14 frames I'll set a keyframe for the built-in light position XY to 2434 and 242. 
Then at around 2 seconds and 11 frames, I'm going to set another for 2098 and 334. This is going to move the light closer to the logo in time with the spotlight animation. Okay, the very last thing that we want to do is create a new adjustment layer and name it Finishing. And to this adjustment layer, I'm going to add the following effects in this order. BCC Fast Film Process, Fast Film Glow, Vignette, and Brightness and Contrast. All right, let's look at the Fast Film Process first. We've got a couple things that we want to do here. First, I'm going to select the preset Faded and Warm. And then I'm going to go to the Post Process subgroup and adjust the Post Saturation to negative 46. Next, I'm going to go to my Fast Film Glow and set the preset to Horizontal Cool Mist. I'm going to set my Glow Intensity to 28 and the Glow Threshold to 58. I can also go to the Glow Color Chip and set the RGB to a nice peach color, which is around 214, 123, and 87. With that done, I can skip over BCC Vignette because at its default settings, it gives me exactly what I'm looking for. But what I want is for this whole thing to fade in all at once. So I'm going to go to my Brightness and Contrast effect and set a Brightness keyframe at the very beginning. Let's set it to about negative 98, move forward a few frames, and set another keyframe for zero. Once that's done, I'll let After Effects cache all my frames. And that's all there is to it. I'm Vin Moriali, and for more great tutorials, don't forget to check out the Boris Effects website. Take care.